name is Vikai Stevens. Welcome to game design number 10. I uh, work on a game for Hamlet, available on Haven Studios. And uh, we are working on this uh, game design number 10. It's SOs without the editor or uh, without the resources uh, is kind of another way to think about this. Uh, SO, uh, of course, stands for Scriptable Object. Uh, this is hopefully going to be a, quite a bit more code heavier. So lots of yapping. Uh, we're going to fire our assets because uh, we think they're dumb. And we're going to do a big shout out to a sharp extent because uh, that's kind of his project that we've uh, Shane Hyde into uh, working for us. And then we're going to be talking about scriptable independent. Uh, depends on how you want to read that. So, uh, scriptable objects, they're quite easy. We right click, we create an asset, we fill out some data, we ship with the game, we make some changes, repeat. Very boring, right? And yes, please clap. Okay, so let's, let's try this. Live demo. Okay, so we're just going to go right click. Create a interactual look interaction. Uh, we're just going to call it look intro for some odd reason. Uh, look intro. Uh, and then we come over here. Uh, we have these um, set field to descriptions. Boring. Really boring. Super boring. And can't read it. Yeah, so it's kind of just the editor. It's, it's tall. It's tiny. Um, but yeah, so cool. Let's uh, go in here and then see what happens. Well, this is not good. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're kidding, buddy. Uh, it's kind of off the survival horror, I think he's calling it. Uh, anyway, so we're going to pick up a gun. We can now... Oh, we can't aim. Wait, uh, so uh, we can just interact. Boring. Really boring. Super boring and can't read it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, now, what was our goal next? If we come back here... Oh, over here... Uh, let's see, we wanted to fire our assets, so we have this uh, folder right here, let's hope this works, uh, we have these assets, streaming assets, resource, we don't need any of that, cool, so now we're just going to build, see what happens, I've deleted that uh, asset I created, it's, uh, it's gone, it's no longer in the scene, uh, we're, we're hopefully going to not get boring, dumb text, uh, it's always interesting in some things when you develop in and and develop dev mode. It's like you you know, and then you you make a build and you run it. Uh, yay, made with Unity. It you know runs great. Oh, this is not good. We still have a weapon. We pick up the weapon. Um, does it? Oh yep. Yeah. Come over here, and then we hit F. Oh, okay. I think we uh, messed up somehow. We do. I think it was because I made a change while well, this wasn't live. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. So it will just always return. Cheating. Cheating. But uh, yes, yeah, so because um, uh, I, I I just I create scriptable objects instead of creating a scriptable object base, which is what I used to do. It uh, doesn't know any of the data for the that it's created a new asset, so um, it's a little slight hiccup there. But you kind of saw a little bit ahead of what's what's supposed to happen. Um, some of the text in here too is like this is a sort of a set text. Uh, he says it's not good every time. Picks up his weapon. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's cool. I think we should be able to run it in play mode. Yeah, there we go. Stage is set. Actors are in place. The danger seems trivial and fades away. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so what was the big deal here? Uh, we have this uh, scriptable, managed scriptable objects. It uh, creates this look intro. Um, and that's kind of uh, important over here, too, is um, you also look over here. Uh, we have this look intro. It's, uh, yeah, it's creating the look intro. Um, do I not need to create it? I think I, maybe I don't need to create it. Anyway, so it, it, uh, it just uh, cr uh, creates the script or object either through the, um, this is a sort of a, a, a super class that I've built. Uh, it's the script or object manager that creates an asset based on the type of asset it is. Um, 
Uh, this is just a C sharp or uh, sharp extent asset. Um, it's an interactive scriptable object. It just runs the execute. Um, uh, and then it goes into the look action. Uh, the look interaction has the description, just, you know, this the one shot. That's kind of why. Uh, this is all part of his survival horror. Um, maybe we should uh, pull that out for everybody. It's uh, pretty awesome. It's uh, pretty cool. It's uh, a lot of state machines. Um, the um, bum bum So it's survival horror here. Uh, and at the bottom, we've got this uh, interactive framework, which I can now mark watched. Um, I think this is part of the, uh, I want to say this is part of the uh, paid um, early look at his uh, thing. So it's always got a little bit, oh, no, sorry, we're watched. Hello. Uh, as you can sort of see, he does the um, the same sort of thing here. He creates a, um, a, um, a, um, a camera action here. Uh, let's see. I think he, he um, and he sets it all up through the, um, through the editor, which I'm not a big fan of, so that's what we're trying to avoid. So, it's uh, a lot of this code is uh, through what he's working on, um, but we're trying to avoid creating this um, through the editor, uh, as we're trying to showcasing here. Um, so yeah, so you can also see that since um, we're sort of populating the data as well, we're getting the um, the thing set up as well. So, and that's kind of the goal here is to um, uh, um, create this. Um, so these are just kind of all uh, right here. We're just trying to create. These are meant to have multiple um, assets in them. Um, so this is kind of really simple. It just adds um, some descriptions and it has uh, a lot of. Um, but the other thing is we got this. Um, we've you know the bolt the gun that was on the ground was an, a gun object and it was a pistol. And how did that work? Well, that works uh, through the exact same way. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because there's a lot more things, but this is kind of where, you know, where we created this script or object uh, through the editor. And that's sort of the goal here is not to take away the ability for you to create assets in the editor. The goal would be to eventually be able to um, sort of create that and, and, and set that up uh, as, as, and as support that as well. Um, I personally don't do that, um, you know, like right here, it sort of comes, uh, the extra right here, how this sort of comes back um, from here, and what it, I, you know, what it, the data it tells me, um, and then I just, I read it, and if it's, no, you know, it's like, this is what it should say, it's like, if it's null, then populate it with the, uh, the, the default data. Uh, anyway, so we come back through the same thing with here, is the, um, we have these objects on the ground, we pick them up, and they become a scriptural object uh, through this templates. Um, and it really, this is kind of starting out with this idea that th this game would be like, you know, we have gun types right now, uh, which also might not determine the, um, the gun type. Well, I think it might, depending on what it is. Um, I think the item horror type more terms the gun type right now. But it's like, you know, it's like a pistol, and you have a rifle and a rocket ammo. And that's sort of like that would determine if it's a weapon pistol or if it's a weapon rifle or weapon rocket. And that's what it's doing right now. So then we also have this um, um, health and energy and stuff like that. But we have items and weapons. Uh, the item right now is we're talking about an item of pistol, which would be a bullet. And then a weapon of pistol would be a gun because it's a weapon that has pistol ammo. And that's sort of what this sort of is trying to set up here is that we go through all this. Um, we have another um, item template, I believe. Um, I believe this is just the, um, this could either be a scriptable object or it could be a struct of some sort as well um, for various reasons. But right now we just have a class and it just tells us the model name, the animation override, the sprite. Um, uh, templates are sort of like, I like this for uh, code because it's, even though it's an item template, um, I just basically use that as a scriptal object or a core object type. Um, anyways, and then it goes through and then has um, the uh, enumeration of the type and the bullets it has. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. Um, that uh, handles the majority of that. Um, and then through the creation of... How does this... Uh, this gets thrown together through the item bootstrap, yeah. So we have these, um, this bootstrap is like um, sort of this, it's a, it's a singleton behavior. It's, uh, these sort of signify that they're sitting on game objects. We can actually see that in our scene over here. Um, 
we need to have uh, the item bootstrap and it needs to know that there's a gun uh, here uh, I think if we load into the scene here uh, this could e is most likely a prefab or something but it's actually just a um, I believe you can sort of eventually oh is it disabled um, yes it might be disabled or uh, anyways it just signifies that the, oh yeah here it is uh, the gun pistol uh, so this is just the uh, from the uh, polygon blacksmith they have a, a pistol here so it's just a pistol uh, it's always disabled because um, it um, it you know they the, the prefabs start to disable so there's our prefab right there the item prefabs weapon prefabs item prefabs are I don't think there is an item prefab um, I believe uh, yeah well there actually is um, it's not actually oh yeah yeah right here so here's our like a uh, it's just, it's just kind of a just a capsule, but it's it's meant to signify that this is actually a bullet that's in the ground uh, with the bullet geo um, sort of. Uh, anyways, then we have the animation for the un, un, uh, unarmed uh, and if you're a pistol, and then we have the item templates, which are I believe you can actually um, edit these um, in the inspector here, uh, right here. Uh, but these are actually pre-generated um, is the goal. Uh, you can sort of see here that it, it generates it as an item pistol and then it gives you the item item template weapon pistol and then um, it gives you that it's a weapon pistol uh, uh, yeah and the data class is sort of a secondary uh, anyway so then here again here is uh, the weapon pistol and the item pistol so it's sort of what this uh, this builds right here it uh, validates um, and if it's a new um, tries to say we don't have to go that way because we can actually just look at it uh, yes I'm not sure I'm not a very big fan of the peaks anyways uh, we just go through the all the item types the horror types uh, we are comparing to get rid of the uh, the count and the none because those are just sort of temporary variables to let us know what's going on and then uh, we create this item template based on this um, the data here which is just the uh, the item type the bullet type you know the model name uh, and the animation override, and I believe, um, yeah, here's another thing where we just, we're, you know, we're doing the exact same thing. We're creating the game items, um, which you can see over here. We uh, create the same sort of thing um, all in code as well. So it's like we create this um, this um, item template serial item that just creates all the data. So we can see it's an item pistol. Uh, it's a pistol override, um, and I believe the other uh, the other one uh, is the weapon. So, and then it has the uh, override. Uh, it should have the um, override pistol. Yeah, so it has the pistol override, uh, and then the animation override. So, it's uh, basically so the animation can. It's it basically takes it, the the visible game object, puts it in its hand, and displays the correct animation based on the the few pieces of data here so it's linking all this together and hopefully a pretty um robust uh, t uh t um sort of um uh, unique way and then also we sort of have to we're creating this asset as a scriptural object so we have to pass it back through as a, a weapon and we always sort of init um we knit the objects that we sort of hey this is the um the, the template of the class and then we have the name of the class and then it just sort of creates this game ob item which is a scriptural object and then it has this model prefab which we set up uh, right down here uh, yeah so this is where it decides um, based on the types of weapons it is and then also sort of like um, uh, yeah so here's the thing like you can sort of say um, I think this is actually sort of like underscores, but um, there's sort of a signi signifying that there's an item gun, pistol, uh, and which are IDs um, and stuff like that. So, uh, And then also, do we check the... Um, I thought there was a way to... Ch oh, yeah, so the model, model prefabs. Um, right now, the item templates are one-to-one -one for the model prefabs, but eventually you would have to go, you know, search for the right prefab um, eventually. Uh, and then we set the uh, prefab to action. I think we have weapon prefabs and item prefabs. Yeah, so it's sort of um, based on the item and the weapon type. So we have, and that's sort of, uh, it could also be a linked list of, you know, the 
item zero is the bullets and the weapon zero is the gun. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of the idea is that we're just kind of tra creating these um, scriptural objects. Uh, oops, let me get to a full screen here. We're creating these um, scriptural objects uh, through the code. Uh, we don't need the assets because we are can create those all from code as well. Uh, and then this is all based on the sharp extent kind of the survival horror. So our, our goal is to be scriptable independent here. Um, and then so anyway, so we, we don't want to do this uh, process here. We, we feel that it's just not conducive to my development with the editor. Uh, maybe in the 2019.3, maybe with dark theme, various things like that. We might actually get better. Um, it just feels like this is just a data you know, tr uh, intrinsic support as well that, you know, you're filling out the data and you're, you're just kind of cr creating all this data. And we think that through other means you can create the data and then uh, ship the game with the data and then stream or, or you know, upload those data through there. Uh, and you, and it's sort of, it can be work out to be extremely simple, like such as this one. Um, it just needs to know um, on the init here. Uh, this is almost the exact same init as um, the Sharp Extent, uh, sorry, who does the exact same thing. We also uh, enable support through the Create Asset menu. Um, and then uh, and then we also, under here, we need to have the Look Intro. Uh, these IDs are hard to get away from. Um, but, you know, we could use, um, over here, you can sort of see the item templates are using, uh, yes, I think it's using the underscores uh, instead. And, and these are kind of, these were before. Uh, you can sort of see that the item templates down here are trying to find um, these, and it should be like item template underscore gun, you know, or item, you know, item template underscore uh, whatever. So, um, well, and this actually just uh, sort of is a, a link to the, um, the ID is a link to the actual t uh, template. So this is not, uh, but it's sort of it can be that sort of idea where um, this one is a specific one that we know that there's a look intro and it's sort of tied in that and it's sort of kind of the idea that there's a look intro you know look interactive and, uh, and, and sort of a chain of events of, of various things that go on in the game and um, it's just sort of linking the ID here to this sort of created um, uh, and it's sort of kind of like a an interactive phase of how oh, you know you're starting to explore the world you find a pillar in his game and something happens and this is kind of what we created uh, right here um, and then the create asset this is actually I guess I should go over this I'm not completely I'm okay with this a little bit um, we're sort of creating this asset um, this uh, here let me go to the actual game uh, how are we doing on time ah, 20 minutes yeah perfect uh, oops sorry too many screens miss my monitors okay so um we do this sort of um uh right oh is this not gonna show me oh no that's because that's the dictionary ah uh, yeah okay here we go so here's the um the scriptural object manager which creates the um um so it's 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 telling us that it's creating the item template in the nine weapon i think some reason why is it not finding oh sorry huh I thought don't we add this somewhere? Huh. Well, maybe this was a, um, it was kind of a last minute sort of. Anyways, let's go over this uh, sort of idea here. It's uh, just a create asset menu, um, sort of a create asset that sort of uh, creates a, an asset based on the T, uh, where it's, it basically needs a scriptural object. Um, I do have a scriptural object base at some point, which gives me more data. Um, which obviously I need to come if I'm coming back with an object here that object needs to sort of have a creation is it a new object is it you know what time was the object created stuff simple stuff like that but um, anyway so we're just sort of creating this um, this sort of uh, 
ability to look at all these scriptable objects, see what they're doing uh, in the editor, uh, and then we um, we create the instance of the asset uh, here, which is probably not uh, maybe not what we want to do. Uh, basically, we we have to create this sort of path structure here, which is the um, the uh, path is the assets resources, and then we have this Haven sort of uh, subfolder of all the assets uh, we're, we're looking for. So we just create the directories. Um, this is so we can delete the directories and it will just recreate them automatically. Um, which I don't like these uh, if um, not directories, but so if, if the directories are not found. Normally, um, the um, this right here, um, I, I found that I, I thought I had to create the assets then the resources if you give create directory a full path it will just create the entire path for you um, uh, including the actual um, the asset name here um, anyway so we're trying to get this asset uh, path and we say the type of T which is sort of gives you the the game item and then you know and then we're trying to that's that's why we're trying to create this this directory structure here that we um, we basically have all the Haven resources, and then we have the game items, which you can sort of see here. Uh, it created the item pistol for us already, and here's the weapon um, there. So, um, so the game item is actually sort of just an item. Uh, anyway, so it creates all this stuff, uh, and if it finds the file, and it says, "Hey, I found the file." Um, this right here is sort of a. Um, it gets kind of a little bit complicated. You can do a lot of these scenes like a reloading, loading all the assets. I probably will do that in the main manager directory, uh, and then sort of find what assets I, I have pre-created. Uh, but basically, we can also do a resource.load based on the asset name. Um, and a lot of this is it, do you include the dot asset, um, which is sort of how Unity defines it. But sometimes you don't need to add the asset, but uh, anyways, uh, the big problem for me is this right here. This is the the clincher of why this isn't working as well as I want it to. In order to, it's so bizarre that it's like for me, it's just right clicking and creating the asset. But for Unity to do it, you have to do this unique asset path, uh, which is kind of great. But then, if you're sort of you want, if it already has the asset, you want to retrieve it. Uh, anyway, so once you then you have to use the asset database to create the asset, and then and then which creates a a, a path to the file with the, that asset and then gives it to you, but it's like it doesn't actually save it, and then so then you have to go save assets and then refresh. But you can't do that if it's not in the um, if it's not if you're in the build mode. So it becomes a much harder um, time. Uh, to sort of do this and then um, I think you can still sort of do so a lot this is sort of trying to do this idea of um, and this sort of right here this this script logic this is sort of runs it at build time and run time but it doesn't actually save it in the file um, so it's kind of nice in the fact that um, I, I was sort of thinking about this idea of well I can't do what I want but I could sort of create this um, this idea that um, I have all the assets created at this, you know, when I'm building the game, and I, you know, edit them, tweak them, get them all running perfectly, and then I ship that with these, and then through the resources load assets, um, and this one here is where I can sort of create it in the editor as well, so then I can sort of see all the data and what it's doing as well inside the editor, like, and after play mode exits as well, so. Um, it's sort of helpful in that terms, but it's not quite. Um, I, I understand why it's complicated because to, in order to get some to access to someone's resources, you have to sort of have the permissions, and you can only write to certain folders. But Unity seems to be really complex in this idea that that somehow these assets are cannot be created, you know. And it's like, and Jason sort of. Uh, works out a little bit better because you can read and write JSON much easier, but then it, you sort of have to. I haven't built the final glue yet to sort of tie that together with a JSON file, which I think is, you know, another step in this. But it's sort of becoming a little complicated. But anyway, so the point being is that we we could create this asset, and then right here is sort of this idea that uh, here again is just the JSON data. You know, you're just reading streams uh, based on the ID of the the stream, uh, and you get this data, 
and then we can sort of create uh, these ass these files and do things with them. Um, this sort of uh, this look interactive is sort of a um, it's sort of the crux right here where it's like I, I, I tie all my sort of interactions of you know is it a one shot the timer of the, the hook you know is it a, does it free time I mean, this is all sort of the um, sharp extent survival horror aspect of this but it, it sort of gives me this ability to create a a piece of data that I can pass around to everybody everybody can sort of look at the data change the data you know which is fine because that's like I'm not worried about any of that um, you know, it, it it sort of you know it it write, reads and writes to various like uh, we can look at that all is one shot right so we find all references here and we could say oh if if the look if the look interaction right here is one shot then we deactivate the hook which is the uh, how it sort of um, connects the um, the glue the mono behavior that connects the the I believe this is the uh, um, the I was trying to think of how, yeah the interactive hook is connects the um, um, the um, triggers so it connects the triggers through here uh, and then just does various things like uh, and I've got the, I've done this quite a bit differently just because I'm um, this kind of how I wanted to do it but um, it just sort of creates this this player state manager and then it loads the interactive which sort of sets this whole thing up which um, I think this is kind of at some point yeah we've created this descriptive with the canvas group and then we set that hook uh and then we set the text to that hook uh which because it's and then to me i think it's uh, it's inactive or inactive yeah anyways uh, when i want that i wanted that to sort of go into the object and you hit f on the object to interact i wanted the object to come up and then be able to interact right away and that was sort of that missing piece there where it's like it was loading the action and then it was like a sharp, sharp, it was slow, a sharp was loading the action or the uh, the uh, interactive on the same kit uh, which eats the mouse click or eats the click and then it's like it loads that and then you have to hit it again to be able to actually so it's like um, it was kind of a little um, so anyway, so I got all that to sort of work and then uh, created a fade out timer at the end here. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of the idea here. Uh, it's just kind of once more with feeling, I guess, is, you know, we're trying to create script objects without the editors sort of uh, doing this right click support. Uh, we still have that, but we're trying to sort of do this with um, with this idea in mind that we're going to create the asset um, based on the templates. Um, which is kind of this is actually I've got this uh, working almost in a much bigger you know where I have hundreds of you know or dozens of different inter interactions um, which is like I've, I have like a type and then it goes into the what type you know this says oh well if this type is this type it can add these items and you know those items can add these items and it sort of builds this entire economic system based on just a few pieces of data uh, which I think would be really cool if um, if it all worked out and, and built up and it's sort of this idea as well that it's sort of building this like you know okay, so it's like okay so what do we do now so it's like well we want to we know we want to add in a, a right you know a rifle so we just that's it that's all we you know and then we just go through and 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 apply the um, the bullet prefabs and link everything up through that interaction of that new type. Same here, you know, we don't need to change the item or the weapon. But we're just adding in a rifle, which will get the item rifle, which will be the bullets, and then we'll get the weapon rifle, which will be the gun, and then we're done. Uh, and then it might be get a little bit more complicated down here, as if we add in, uh, we want to add in, um, you know, a vehicle or something. Then it might be, you know, what's a vehicle pistol? You know, what's a vehicle um, rifle? So it gets a little bit more complicated, but the bullet types and the item types don't need to, you know, you don't have to respond to every single enumeration. Anyways, I think my cat's uh, getting uh, antsy again, so we're going to have to wrap it up here. I just want to thank everybody. Uh, please clap. You can leave comments, uh, and we'll, you know, hopefully... Um, we improve this and bring this to the um, the Hamlet pretty soon. So you take care. Thanks very much.